nowadays you don't have to use your main 3D software to create clothes and class simulations because it probably sucks. Unless you are using an add-on or something. But today I'm not gonna leave you empty handed since we have a couple of software for cloth design and cloth simulations. And these are Marvelous Designer and Cloth 3D. So without further ado, let's jump right in. For starters, Marvelous Designer was developed for creating and designing virtual garments and cloth simulations for the entertainment industry, including video game development, animation, movies, and animated series as well. Because as we all know, they require realistic class simulations and design a realistic clothes for 3D characters. Following its successful debut, when Wada Digital used it in the Adventures of Tenten back in 2011, Marvelous Designer rose to fame to become one of the most dominant cloud design software in the VFX field. And I would personally say that it is the best, especially considering the fact that it was driven by the industry's lack of this type of tool, especially back at the time. And to this day, it is still used by almost all major studios for creating VFX shots for movies, TV series, and especially video games. The aim for the software for cloth design not to leave the computer screen, meaning its use cases are mainly in entertainment and something that you can see on the screen. On the flip side of things, we have Cloth 3D, which stands as the polar opposite yet a similar software to Marvelous Designer. It also follows a subscription-based model, and it was specifically developed to be used within the fashion industry for garment production and virtual cloth prototyping. You see, the idea behind this software is to design clothes that will then be exported for the production phase to manufacture wearable clothes instead of just leaving it inside the computer screen. Even though you can just like Marvelous Designer do many things in virtual fields, Cloth 3D is also one of the most dominant software in the field and it is used by some of the most popular brands in the world such as Adidas, BMW and Mattel. So a question that comes to mind now is what similarities do these software share and what aspects sets them apart and to what degree their features overlap which is what we're gonna talk about. Generally speaking their user interfaces are somewhat similar and while I find Cloth 3D a little bit intimidating at the first sight but I still believe it is kind of the same interface with a slightly different layout. So both of their user interfaces are divided into two sections. First, a 2D workspace where we could draw and design patterns of the clothing items by combining a collection of tools that are similar to what could be found in a 2D drawing software such as Photoshop. While the tools are many, most of the time you would be using what is known as a polygonal tool to draw the lines of the shapes that you want, such as a shirt or a pair of pants. You also have a curve tool, and as the name suggests, you will use it to create curves and arcs to replace the straight lines, and control points at each corner of the patterns for further control of the shape, which can be useful in many cases. What's interesting about Cloth 3D in the studio aspect is how it supports a print layout feature, which is a process of arranging 2D patterns on a virtual fabric in a way that prepares them for printing onto actual fabric as well as markers, which are digital representations of pattern pieces that are laid out on a virtual fabric in order to be measured and optimize their usage of fabric materials and to make sure you don't buy unnecessary fabric. God forbid your boss fires you. Then we have a 3D workspace where we can import our 3D models into the scene and it gives us the ability to position and move 2D patterns to areas that we want to simulate them in. Now, here is the deal. They both share the same foundations, but their own set of differences as well. One core difference in this aspect is how only characters could be imported into Cloth 3D, whereas in Marvelous Designer, any 3D object could be imported, for example, a frame of the tent, to add designs to fabric parts, for example, and you can use it for endless things, like beds, sofas, or any other object that you can think of. Also, both of these tools provide sewing and stitching functionalities. And for those unaware, 
it involves the process of joining various 2D patterns to form a full garment simulation. And this is done by combining the front and back sections of the patterns, where we have the flexibility to select and connect any areas we wish to realistically simulate it. Additionally, they also include a property editor, with many aspects that could be adjusted, such as the stitching type, offset, and so on. And while it does look a little bit different in terms of layout as we said, I think they more or less cover the same functionalities. Now, regarding the cloth simulation side of things, once again, they can be similar in many things, because they use similar algorithms. So the idea behind it is that each particle corresponds to a small section of the fabric, which are all interconnected with each other, and the smaller the particle distance is, the more particles it will have, resulting in a more realistic simulation. Additionally, they come with a library of a variety of fabric types such as silk, nylon, and cotton, in addition to other stuff that try to mimic a similar behavior of the fabric as if we are dealing with in real life. You also have the ability to adjust it further with elements such as stiffness or bending, in addition to a hand-like grabbing tool that could be used to pull and pinch and adjust clothes in real time, which is really useful, especially if something is stuck. One of the primary differences between the two software lies in Cloth3D's incorporation of fit maps to visualize the pressure distribution in various sections of the designs for durability, comfort evaluation, and so on. You know, industrial design stuff. In this context, the blue color indicates no stress is applied to the clothes, while the red indicates strong stress. On a second note, Marvelous Designer with its focus being a software which is targeted for industries like VFX and video games and provides a toolbox of a solid set of features designed to streamline the conversion of 3D assets to other software packages such as Blender or Unreal Engine. Now, the thing is, we won't be able to cover all of them in detail in this video alone, but as a summary, we have for example, retopology tools where you could draw the topology and even choose the number of subdivisions, as well as having a UV editor, where the 2D patterns could be treated as UVs for texturing purposes, and even a sculpting mode for further defining the simulated clothes, such as the use of the dynamic cloth brushes to add wrinkles and different clothing effects, which makes sense to have since these features are in Marvelous Designer and not in Cloth3D because its primary focus is physical garment production. And unlike Marvelous Designer, Cloth3D offers the ability to import and export 2D patterns in the DXF format, which stands for Drawing Exchange Format, and it is used for sharing CAD drawings between different software and could be used to export digital garments for manufacturing purposes. When it comes to learning which software and choosing which one to work with, I personally think the main difference or the main thing that you can follow is what industry you are in or what kind of job that you want to use them for. So if you are a fashion designer or something like that, I would recommend Cloth3D. But if you are a video game developer or wanna be VFX artist, and then obviously you have to choose Marvelous Designer because it is more versatile, but most importantly, it is an industry standard tool that you will have to use at some point if you join the industry. So you will be much more ready. And when it comes to learning particularly, I think they are both easy to learn, especially at the beginning. It will be fun and easy for simple tasks, of course. But when things get complicated, you will of course have to focus and learn new stuff and techniques to create amazing things. So guys, I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.